Hare Krishna, friends and followers of my YouTube channel. Today I'm here uh, presenting to you a very interesting topic on Srimad Bhagavatam, how to become fearless. I've just been through COVID myself and it's a very, very difficult uh, time to get through uh, the disease and to um, stabilise yourself because there's always fear that you may not survive it. And we have had so many losses in, during the pandemic. So the topic throughout the pandemic, I've been doing a series of um, videos and podcasts on my uh, Facebook page as well as um, uh, on YouTube. But uh, today I wanted to specifically talk about how to become fearless. How can we become fearless? What is the fears? So let's read from the... Um, Srimad Bhagavatam, the verse today is uh, Canto 3, 2543, chapter 25, verse 43. Jnana Vairagya, sorry, Jnana Vairagyena Akutobhayam. That's the verse that we're discussing. Fearfulness in the material world, what is it? We all have fear. At any moment, actually, the biggest fear is death. There are other fears as well, fear of losing our loved ones, fear of uh, losing our job, um, you know, so many different types of fears. We all have experience of it in our day to day life. Fear of uh, losing money, fear of uh, struggling. This is called um, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is called the struggle for existence. At any moment, the most important fear is the fear of death. This is the one uh, that we all um, face at any moment our life may go and it may be finished uh, at every step there is danger how is that happening because even in when we're walking we could slip on a banana peel and fall and and, and die or a bus can come and knock us over this is any moment any time even if we're sitting in a chair sitting calmly in a chair one day suddenly we can have heart failure and um you know, that could happen to us. There is no guarantee. This is what we're trying to say. There's no guarantee that at any moment death may come to us. And this is why this, this earth planet is called Mrityuloka in Sanskrit. Mrityuloka, the, the place of death, actually. We heard that saying in English, as sure as death. You know, this is like a, a saying in, 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 in English, as sure as death. This means that no one can avoid it. It's absolutely guaranteed. It's just as birth is guaranteed, death is guaranteed. So um, we can't avoid it. Even we do, uh, we are healthiest person on this planet doing exercise, eating plant-based foods now, veganism, this and that, whatever. But at any moment, we can still die. There is no guarantee. Is there any insurance policy against death? So everyone wants to be safe, healthy, wealthy, security. Everybody's looking for that. But there is actually no security in this material world. It's actual struggle for existence. This is what the um, Sanskrit word is, mrityuloka. It's a struggle here, struggle for existence. We all have experience of that. Material world is mrityuloka. It's meant for this. There is no insurance policy that will actually give us um, peace of mind, security. So Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that he is the person who is the friend of all living entities. The actual word in Sanskrit he calls is Suridam. Yeah, Krishna uses this word. He is the friend of everyone. He, he doesn't say that he's only the friend of Hindu, of Indian Krishna is only Hindu God or Indian God and he's only the friend of the Hindus. He doesn't say that. He says, I am the friend and of all living entities, even animals, plants, everything. So he is the friend, Suridam, he's friend. Suridam Sarvabhutanam Gyatva Mam Shantim Richati. This is in the Bhagavad Gita. This is the Bhagavad Gita that we're reading from. Bhagavad Gita as it is. There is no change, no, no um, concoction in this. It is as it is. Each Sanskrit word is given word for word 
back so you know what you're getting. So he's the friend, Suridam. He's the friend of all living entities. And when we know Krishna is our friend and we surrender to him, which is the last instruction of the Bhagavad Gita, come to me, surrender to me. And what will Krishna promise? He promises that he will. Um, if you do this, then you will be freed of all anxiety, freed of all sinful reactions or mistakes that you've committed in, in your journey. Let's read that verse. Krishna says this. Sarva dharma paritya jama me kam sharanam vraja. Sarva pape. Sorry, let me get it right. I can't remember the verse now where it is. Sarva dharma paritya. A very important instruction. It's the last instruction that Krishna gives in the Bhagavad Gita. An assurance. He gives us assurance. Give me a moment, sir. It's 1866. Chapter 1866. Let's see this one, it's very authentic, so that's why I'm reading it directly for you, not just paraphrasing it. Uh, 1866, here it is. So Krishna says, Abandon all varieties of religion, dharma. Surrender to me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. Sarva dharma paritya jama me kam sharanam braja aham tam sarva pape bhyomokshe shami ma suchaha so he has promised us this. He will help us, guide us, um, to be free from all anxieties and all our sinful reactions. Karma, karma fall, we say in Hindi, isn't it? So if we give, give, every, if we actually surrender to Krishna, and we come to Krishna, this is actual Krishna consciousness, God consciousness. If we forget Krishna, on the other hand reject his instructions, reject him completely, don't believe in him, we will re always remain in fear. Always remain in fear. Fear of losing this, fear of losing that, because we're in the body consciousness. I, me and mine. Limited consciousness. We think that this is the, uh, 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 the sum and bonum of everything is within this material realm. I am man, woman. I am a doctor, I am, a, you know, this is the limitations, body consciousness, not Krishna consciousness or God consciousness, which frees us from these limited, limited thinking. Beyond this material vision is something else. So we have to know this, who we really are. And once we understand we are the soul and we are connected to a super soul, a supreme soul, then we will not have fear of anything. Bhayam dvitiyam bhineveshata sha. This is fearfulness. Dvitiya means forgetfulness of Krishna. This is the reason why we are fear fearful. And the analogy that's given is like a child. Just like a child who is the child of a rich father. Forgets that he has a rich father. And he's crying on the road all day thinking, where is my father? Where is my father? You know, uh, like feeling like an orphan then he will always remain in fearfulness. We have forgotten that we have an intimate relationship with that supreme uh, super consciousness, super soul. Um, <coughs> just like a father and son relationship. So Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, to substantiate this, Krishna actually says that he is Aham Bija Pradapita. I am the seed giving father. We are part and parcel of Krishna. This is what he is explaining. So once we've understood that he is the seed-giving father, we are his children, we will not have fear. There are so many different forms of life. Eight In Bhagavad Gita it explains there are 8.4 million species of life. Aquatics, plants, amoeba, cells, viruses. These are all living living entities. And 8.4 million species. But he says that he is the seed giving father, father of all of them. He doesn't say he's only a Hindu father of all the Hindus. He says all the living entities. This is why in our Sanatana Dharma, in our Krishna consciousness, we believe that the whole planet is one family. Vasudeva Kutumbakam. 
So we are all one family, children of God. So this is what Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita. Fearful, we are always fearful. What's going to happen next? And this pandemic has made us even more fearful. When's the next mutation, virus mutation going to happen? Uh, we're going to have a shortage of supply of uh, petrol, food, and this and that. We're always in fear, fear of losing our jobs, everything. So this is why are we fearful? Because we have accepted asato, asato, uh, asat, that which is illusionary. This body as our, and the designations of this body. We have accepted American Indian, these all designations. I am a doctor, I am a this, that. We've accepted these temporary designations. So in the Bhagavad Gita, it says, Asatoma Sadgama. Don't remain in asat, darkness, ignorance. This is what the Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam are saying. Come to the truth, come to the light. So in the material world, we are in asat. Therefore, there is always fear. We're in illusion, bhaya or fear. So just like the child, I gave you the analogy, so is lost, lost in, in, in looking for his father. We are like that, looking for who is our protector, who is our uh, true relationship with. We have accepted all these other relationships as true, real. We haven't tried to understand who we really are. Aham, um, sorry, the scriptures say, Aham, Aham Brahmasmi. Aham Brahmas means, means I am spirit. I am not this material body and its designation. So, um, <coughs> so if we forget Krishna or God, we will suffer. So the last instruction of the Bhagavad Gita, we explained that I will free you, Krishna says, Aham Tvam Sarva Moksha Ishami Masuchaha. So he is saying that he will free you for all, for all the mistakes and the sinful things you've been doing or the past. Even the pious things will bind us. Goodness, sinfulness, they will all bind us because we get an equal and opposite reaction. So for good uh, pious activities, we get good rewards like wealth, education. For impious activities, we get punishments like, you know, karma that sprouts up sometimes, illnesses, uh, loss of wealth, you know, so these kind of things. Um, so we change the bodies according to our karma, according to our desire. So we could be the, a, a dog's body or a human body. So we are in all these difficult situations. Uh, and we are thinking that we're comfortable. We're in our comfort zone. You know, I've got my house, I've got my mortgage, I've got everything sorted. You know, my children are in good school. So we are thinking that we are actually comfortable. But actually... <coughs> But we are never in a good position. This is what we have to accept, that we're never actually in a good position. We're always in a razor's edge. Anything can happen at any moment. And this pandemic has showed us that. So the um, scriptures, the Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, are say you, you, you are according to your karmas or your activities, you become that. So you become either a dog or a demigod or, a, you know, depending on your impious, pious deeds. You could be an insect in your next birth. So this is maya. Maya means illusion. We're thinking that we are secure, but we're not in a secure position. Um, there's a famous uh, bhajan, uh, trying to remember it. Bhajahure mana srinandanandana apaya charanara in, the rain. Um, in that bhajan, there is a verse that says we are just like the, the, the petal or the leaf and you see the raindrop on it. It can just drop at any moment. It's described in that bhajan, how that drop can just drop from the leaf down, finished. So our life is fragile like that. Anything can happen at any moment. So to become secure, what do we need to do to become secure? Well, the scriptures say, take to the yoga system, this yoga science. Jnana Vairagya Yuktena Bhakti Yogena Yogina. That is the verse that we're discussing. Jnana Vairagya Yuktena Bhakti Yogena Yogina. So what does this mean? Yogis, but means you bhakti yogis. Those who have connected, yoga means to connect, 
through the medium of devotion, bhakti. So this is what the true yoga is, not the gymnastic breathing pranayama. This is just a preliminary. Um, so this kind of yoga, concentrating the mind with a mechanical process of Ashtanga yoga or Hatha yoga, these are all mechanical processes to, to try to control the mind, uh, which actually is very difficult in this age where there's so many distractions social media, this and that, so many demands on us, we can't easily concentrate. So even Arjuna says in the Bhagavad Gita how difficult it is for him to control the mind. He says, Krishna, this mind is so difficult to control. It's like the wind. How can you capture the wind and control it? You know, so he gives that analogy. So the true yoga, not this mechanical, artificial process of forcing ourselves to remain in this... Um, trance-like or it's a kind of yoga samadhi it's not practical in this age of kali yuga so uh, krishna says bhakti yoga is the easier method to control the mind and senses so real yoga is to fix the mind on krishna or god consciousness whichever god you you um believe in uh, krishna says in the in the bhagavatam 12 chapter 12 uh, sorry canto 12 13 chapter 13 1 dhyana vastita tad gatena manasa payanti yam yogina so this is the verse how to control the mind and focus on krishna that is real yoga meditation like meditation on the mantra hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 rama hari rama 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 hari hari this is meditation. But also, even better than this, we do meditation and we chant this mantra, which is the uh, Yuga Dharma. It is a very important part of our process. But also, because we are act active, we have to engage our activities in as well, practical activities in Krishna consciousness. So Krishna says, you can uh, offer me food, you can, just like Ambarish Maharaj, this is a great devotee, Ambarish Maharaj, he used all his senses. He used his legs to walk to the temple of Krishna, he used his hands to clean the temple, uh, and he used his no smelling to smell the flowers that were offered to Krishna. He used his taste to eat Krishna prasadam, foodstuffs that have been offered to Krishna. So this is practical application, as well as meditation on the mantra. So by application of seva activities to further help this uh, spreading the word of God consciousness, this is also part of um, Yubhakti Yoga. Um, I gave the example of Ambarish Maharaj who remembered Krishna through all his senses. So Krishna says in the um, Bhagavad Gita, finally I'll leave it here because I don't want it to be too long. We will continue this topic in another uh, session. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 927. So very nice to just to end this on a, on a note which we can remember. I'll get the 927. It's a part of the confidential knowledge that Krishna gives us in the Bhagavad Gita. It's a beautiful verse which actually encapsulates how we can remember Krishna. Let me just find it, if you bear with me. 9.27 Yat karoshi yad asnasi yad johosi dadasi yat yad tapasyasi konteya tat kurushva madarpanam What does this mean? It's beautiful. O son of Kunti, all that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away as well as all austerities, tapasya, that you perform should be done as an offering to me. So again, we will, we will go through that. All that you do, all your activities during the day, all your activities and all your karmas, all your, that you offer to eat, all that you eat, offer it to me. If you give away in charity, do it in thinking of Krishna. Any austerities, tapasya, sometimes we fast on different fast days that help us to focus and not think of the body and bodily needs all the time. So all austerities perform for, uh, for me as an offering. So this arpana, offer things 
in, in to Krishna. And in the purport you will hear, Prabhupada says, it is the duty of everyone to mould his life in such a way that he will always remember Krishna and never forget him in any circumstance, which is what Arjuna did. He's fighting a battle, he's on a battlefield, faced against his end, his family members who took the path of adharma, irreligiosity, took the side of Duryodhan, who was a totally irreligious person, persecuting sadhus, raping women. He was doing all sorts of atrocities and taking, usurping the kingdom. So he was faced with all his relatives who were on that side, his uh, grandfather, his uh, teachers. He was in that terrible circumstance and he had to remember Krishna then. So this is in any circumstance. Everyone has to work for maintenance of his body and soul. Nobody can avoid that. And Krishna recommends that one should work for him. Give some money towards the Krishna God consciousness, building temples, printing books to spread this spiritual transcendental knowledge. Distributing these books is also a way you can help. Everyone has to eat something. Therefore, he should accept the Krishna Prashadam, the remnants of foodstuffs that have been offered. Um, any, and any civilized man has to perform some religious ritualistic ceremonies. So pious people usually do some ritualistic ceremonies and charity. Prabhupada says civilized man. So this is the, you know, dharmic type of people. Therefore, Krishna recommends do it for me. This is called archana. Everyone has a tendency to give something in charity. So Krishna says, give it to me. And this means that all surplus money accumulated, accumulated can be utilised in furthering this Krishna conscious movement. So people are very much inclined to the meditational process, which is important, but may not be practical in this age to be meditating all the time. So in this age, it is practical um, but if, if any, he says, but if anyone practices meditating on Krishna 24 hours by chanting this mantra, he is the greatest yogi. If he can do all of those things that he's just said, offer the foodstuffs, do all of those things, offer your works, charity, austerities, and this mantra meditation, you're thinking of Krishna all the time, actually, because you're thinking, how can I offer something to him? So this is the secret of success in this Kali Yuga, this difficult age where we're always distracted. So um, that person who does all that we've just discussed is the greatest of yogis. It's, a, it's not my words, it's Krishna's words. In the sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna actually says the greatest, topmost yogi is one who is thinking of him, offering his food to him, doing all the things we've just said. Um, so that is the greatest yogi, topmost yogi. So I hope this has become clear and that we can continue this topic, how to become fearless uh, for another day. So thank you for listening. Hare Krishna. See you soon. Hare Krishna.